Uh, but that in the meantime, I think the history of the Soviet Union and what happened after its demise should warn us that we will face remarkable resistance by vested interests in this system as constituted today uh, because the money involved, the jobs involved, the uh, uh, structures of life that we have been led to believe are indispensable to our very identity, such as the automobile, uh, the automobile as, as we drive it here in Southern California. The, uh, uh, this could be changed, obviously, but what, what is history would suggest that it was more likely to lead to conflict, but that conflicts that we are very likely now to lose. It's nowhere written that the United States must go on forever as uh, the hegemon dominating the rest of the world. As, it, as I say, history does seem to be speeded up. If we were carrying on this conversation, say in 1985, and I had said to you that within five years the Soviet Union will disappear, you would have thought, this guy is inhaling too deeply on something grown around the Berkeley campus. Uh, this is not a reliable source of information. I am here to tell you, like uh, Nabokov talking about Gogol, it's gone. That is, Russia is not the Soviet Union. It's got a GNP about the size of the Netherlands. It, the place came right apart between 1991 and, I mean, 1989 and 1991, when they made the famous decision not to resist the Germans' desire to tear down the Berlin Wall, and that then this led into something that we in the United States could not possibly stand, what uh, Gorbachev uh, instituted, Glasnost, opening the prisons, letting everybody out of Guantanamo, uh, and opening the archives, revealing all the black operations of the CIA. The Russian people became so horrified once the details of the gulags were brought home to them. I mean, Solzhenitsyn had already started to introduce it, but when they began to understand the horrors of the Stalinist system, they tore the place apart. And everybody who could got out, went independent, created an independent... We'd have an independent Texas if you'd... Uh, uh, no, that would not necessarily be a bad thing. The, uh, the point here is to say these things happen suddenly, much more fast than you may believe, uh, that we are not well warned, that is, a $28 billion Central Intelligence Agency whose primary function was to study the Soviet Union throughout the 1980s didn't notice that the place was coming apart economically. Now, I agree with Senator Moynihan there, this is, a, this is a, a place to save $28 billion, I would have thought. It would have been better not to have had it than to listen to their lunatic overstatements of the threat of the Soviet Navy, the threat of, uh, of uh, Soviet weapons, of uh, strategic weapons, uh, of how we were going to uh, break their back economically with, with Ronnie Baby Star Wars and things of this sort. None of that happened, that the Soviet Union came apart because, for the same reason that most empires do come apart. And I'm here to argue that we're not invulnerable. That is to say, Americans often argue with me things like, are you trying to say that our decline is inevitable? I am not saying that. I am saying I cannot imagine the evidence for the opposite point of view. I cannot imagine what evidence one would produce to say, we go on forever now. We are like Apollo. Uh, we are no longer subject to, uh, to the cycles of decay and of overstretch and of hubris uh, that are so palpably apparent in our ideology, in our people, in our uh, uh, flag-waving patriotism, uh, and our lack of knowledge of as elemental things as the Constitution. I mean, under Attorney General Ashcroft, two articles of the Bill of Rights are now dead letters, four and six, that is, on uh, 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 freedom from intrusion into your home and habeas corpus, that is, the the, uh, the demand that the government must produce charges against you uh, and uh, allow you to defend yourself, give you expert legal advice in defending yourself, 
confront witnesses against you. Uh, we have, the president has now uh, arrogated to himself the uh, power to declare somebody to be, quote, a bad guy. And a bad guy he can throw into a naval prison in Charleston, South Carolina, and throw the key away. Uh, it, it, this is not what Article 6 says the president gets to do. Uh, and yet the American public tolerates it. That's what, the, uh, what would be required in this reversal is a change in the level and quality of information available to the public. They clearly are wildly misled today by a propaganda apparatus that is associated with the entertainment industry. I mean, that dominates it for commercial and uh, commercial reasons, commercial profit, uh, from uh, Fox News to uh, uh, Verizon's control of CBS, GE's control of NBC, Disney's control of ABC. Uh, there's hardly a word put out on it that you can believe, and if you actually know something about the subject before you hear it, you know what you just heard was not true. Uh, the, it happens all the time. Or the happy news that follows after the first 15 minutes. It, it's quite literally like listening to Pravda. And as the Russians used to say, no one reads Pravda to get the news. You read Pravda to get the line. You get the news from people you trust, from your own little radio, uh, from some ways that, from uh, messages that friends transmit to you. Uh, I no longer read the New York Times for the news. I read it for the line. It, of course, takes us back and reminds us again of the world of Adolf Hitler, of Lenny Riefenstahl, of Joseph Goebbels, of uh, the, uh, I mean, the enormous power. Whether Riefenstahl, the now just recently died, late Lenny Riefenstahl, was a Nazi or not, Lord knows Adolf Hitler knew what she was capable of doing. No one, I think, will ever forget her pictures of the Nuremberg rally of 1934 mm -hmm. with uh, Rudolf Hess in this sea of swastikas turning and saying, you know, Mein Führer Sieg Heil, and then comes forward Adolf Hitler to give one of his most incredible speeches ever. Uh, this was when we really did begin to discover the world of, not propaganda, the world of manipulation of, uh, of the public through symbols and, uh, and symbolic uh, control, which is uh, I think we suffer from it in the United States today in an extremely advanced manner. Uh, and that, that is, in my view, I mean, let's put it another way. Probably one of the most extraordinary patriots in our society today and the closest thing to sort of our version of Cicero, the most Cicero, the, the great defender of the old Republican Roman Senate, the believer in uh, the way things that should be done, the uh, the man who uh, acquiesced in the killing by his fellow senators, uh, uh, Cassius and Brutus of uh, Julius Caesar, uh, Cicero. Our Cicero is, uh, is Senator Robert Byrd of West Virginia. He's out giving the most unbelievably powerful speeches in glorious rhetoric that you listen to it, and of course we're remind we it's it's Roman rhetoric, but it's also. Uh, constitutional rhetoric. It's the rhetoric of the American Founding Fathers. It's, it's a uh, rhetoric of the kinds of devices built into our society in order to protect our liberty and to prevent the development of uh, autocratic authoritarian governments associated with militarism, for example. Uh, but of course, uh, Byrd has no power and he's an old man and he comes from a poor state. Uh, so he's hardly listened to. We, the, what you really want to do is to see C-SPAN to always pan away from him and show you the totally empty Senate quarters as he's delivering one of his brilliant speeches. But Byrd, differing from me, believes that the American public simply awaits its moment of revelation of what's been going on. That once the citizen becomes well-informed, begins to gather information on the degree to which uh, he is being sabotaged by our ersatz political leaders, that they will then, this citizen will rise up, retake the government, uh, will uh, uh, purify uh, the place. I would like to think he's right. I don't myself actually believe so.